Hi everyone, welcome back to this short tutorial from Pathology Made Simple at ilopathology.com and supported by this amazing AI based study tool called Wisdolia. At the end of this session, I will be posting the link to the practice sessions via Wisdolia. So, in continuation with the autoimmune diseases series, in my earlier videos, I have completed the general concepts of autoimmunity and then about systemic lupus erythematosus. And now, from today, let's learn about another important autoimmune disease that's rheumatoid arthritis. In this session, let's learn in detail about the etiopathogenesis of rheumatoid arthritis. So, what is rheumatoid arthritis? This is an autoimmune disease which involves joints. As the name says, arthritis, right? It involves joints which produces a non-suppurative proliferative and inflammatory synovitis. If it is not tackled early, it can progress to articular cartilage destruction and fusion of the joints which is referred to as ankylosis. So, the name rheumatoid arthritis was actually coined by Sir Alfred Baring Garrod. He was an English physician way back in 1859. He coined the term rheumatoid arthritis. It's based on the Greek word called rheuma, which means which flows, or it means like. So, basically, rheuma meaning, you know, any deflection of thin humor or flow of fluid and arthros meaning joint and itis meaning inflammation. So, rheumatoid arthritis is inflammation of joint. It is a joint involvement, which is a predominant manifestation, which is basically involvement of diarthrodial joints. It is often symmetrical involvement and bilateral involvement. The most commonly affected joints are the proximal interphalangeal and metacorpophalangeal joints, the elbows, knees, ankles and spine. It's not just articular lesions, it can also involve extra articular lesions, particularly involvement of skin, heart, blood vessels and lungs. All these manifestations, you know, I mean, the extra articular ones, they overlap with that of other autoimmune disorders. And that's why many authors would love to use the term rheumatoid disease rather than rheumatoid arthritis alone for those diseases which also involves extra articular manifestations. The prevalence of rheumatoid arthritis is around 1% in USA and then the peak incidence of this disease occurs in third to fifth decade of life. Of course, as usual with other autoimmune diseases, females are most commonly affected in the ratio of 3 is to 1. So, I am sure if you have watched my earlier videos, the mechanisms of autoimmunity is the same where there is imbalance between the lymphocyte activation and the mechanisms of tolerance. So, basically there is failure of tolerance mechanisms which leads to autoimmunity. So, is the case in rheumatoid arthritis. It involves the factors involving failure of autoimmunity could be classified as genetic factors and environmental triggers. The genetic factors, you know, it constitutes around 50% of the risk of developing rheumatoid arthritis. The loci, the genetic locus that predisposes is usually present in HLA-2 genes. You know, there are specific set of HLA-DR alleles, you know, HLA-DR4, HLA-DR1, HLA-DR10 and 14 is consistently increased in these patients. Which means to say that people who have these alleles, they are more prone to the development of rheumatoid arthritis. Now, what are the environmental triggers? The environmental triggers could be a simple infection. It could be as simple as just a periodontitis and smoking is an important risk factor. What does that do? Infection or smoking that promotes citrullination of self-proteins. Now, what is this citrullination? Citrullination means this is the post-translational modification where arginine residues of certain proteins in the joints, they are converted to citrulline, right? Now, these, uh, you know, this mechanism is brought about by the enzymes called peptidyl arginine deaminases, PADs. And the joint proteins which are citrullinated are the fibrinogen, the type 2 collagen, alpha enolase and vinculin. These are the important joint proteins where the arginine of these proteins gets converted to citrulline, right? Now, what happens when there is citrullination that results in creation or exposure of new epitopes, that's 
antigenic determinants and these new epitopes you know they are recognized as foreign by our immune system and because they are recognized as foreign by immune system that triggers auto antibody production and these auto antibodies are anti citrullinated peptide antibodies acpas they are most specific for rheumatoid arthritis so remember in pathogenesis you need to know the word citrullination right so let's uh, look into exact mechanism of you know, joint involvement or joint damage in rheumatoid arthritis as we told there are two important factors right genetic factors and environmental triggers genetic factors basically is failure of tolerance or unregulated lymphocyte activation whereas environmental triggers include enzymatic modification because of infection or smoking and that's citrullination now what happens when these happen in a genetically susceptible individual there will be t e and b cell responses now what are these t and, t and b cell responses first of all let's talk about t cell responses the it leads to the activation of cd4 positive t cells what are these important cd4 positive t cells they are t helper 17 and t helper 1 cells okay these two cells are activated so once these are activated the t helper 17 synthesizes interleukin 17 which recruits neutrophils and monocytes and these neutrophils and monocytes they secrete proteases and t helper 1 cells they secrete interferon gamma which activates macrophages and these macrophages further releases lots and lots of tumor necrosis factor interleukin 1 and interleukin 6 which further recruits and activate leukocytes and other cells and other cells could be synovioocytes and fibroblasts right so the leukocytes which are activated again they activate or release proteases which leads to destruction of the hyaline cartilage so as i told you these proteases are responsible for destruction of hyaline cartilage of these joints another important t cell response is they can express rank ligand right rank ligand which stimulates the osteoclasts in the joint space and within the bone which leads to bone resorption now moving on to understanding the b cell responses where there is activation of b cells leading on to production of you know uh, conversion of these b cells into plasma cells and thereby the plasma cells you know synthesize lots and lots of antibodies and these are auto antibodies the auto antibodies they are as i told you anti citrullinated tied antibodies rheumatoid factor we'll talk about these antibodies a bit later right and these auto antibodies they form immune complexes with the proteins which are exposed with the antigens which are exposed right so and these immune complexes they activate complement within the joint space see the activated complement actually recruit and activate leukocytes further they can release proteases causing hyaline cartilage destruction they can also lead to increase in the inflammatory cells leading on to chronic inflammation and the proliferation of synovial tissue and fibroblast also takes place finally leading on to the formation of pannus this remember as of now that this pannus is basically a proliferated tissue within the joint space comprised of synovial hyperplasia edematous tissue and infiltration by inflammatory cell infiltrates i'll talk about this in more detail when i talk about the morphology of rheumatoid arthritis right and this pannus again the inflammatory cells in the pannus again they can lead to expression of rank ligand on the t cells which further stimulate osteoclast leading on to bone resorption so you have hyaline cartilage destruction you have bone resorption you have chronic inflammation leading on to the formation of pannus and this pannus once it is formed can further lead to destruction of hyaline cartilage and finally the end result is the joint damage right so this is the pathogenesis of rheumatoid arthritis before i conclude uh, this session let's understand what are the types of auto antibodies produced in rheumatoid arthritis the first one is rheumatoid factor Right. What is the rheumatoid factor? These are the antibodies that targets the Fc portion of immunoglobulin G antibodies. 
right it is present in around 70 to 80 percent of rheumatoid arthritis patients but remember these auto antibodies which is referred to as rheumatoid factor they can be igm or iga auto antibodies what is what are these auto antibodies they are the ones which target the fc portion of the immunoglobulin g which is normally present in the joint space right so and these auto antibodies can be igm or iga accounting for around 70 to 80 percent of patients but then it is not specific as these auto antibodies can also be found in other autoimmune diseases the second important auto antibody is what we have studied now right anti citrullinated protein antibodies because they are the auto antibodies which target citrullinated proteins it is present in 60 to 70 percent of rheumatoid arthritis patients less than what you see less than the rheumatoid factor but then if you demonstrate the presence of anti citrullinated protein antibodies that is very highly specific for the diagnosis of rheumatoid arthritis the third important one is anti carbamylated protein antibodies they target the carbamylated proteins they are also associated with most more severe disease as that of anti citrullinated protein antibodies but then they are less common as compared to that of the other two auto antibodies of course you can also find anti nuclear antibodies but then they are not specific because we know that anti nuclear antibodies can be seen in various other autoimmune diseases like systemic lupus erythematosus sjogren syndrome etc right but if you want to diagnose rheumatoid arthritis you need to remember anti citrullinated protein antibodies right that is the highly specific antibodies for rheumatoid arthritis with this i conclude this short session on understanding the etiopathogenesis of rheumatoid arthritis if you want to know how you have understood this topic i would suggest you to click on the practice session below via wisdolia to solve these multiple choice questions you can also attempt questions which are clinical based scenarios and the best part of this platform is that you get instant feedback if you go wrong or if you commit mistakes while answering these questions and that's what makes this ai tool wisdolia very exciting and fun to learn so click on the link below in the description or pin comment and start practicing thank you for watching if you have liked this video click on the like button do comment if you have any queries to ask don't forget to subscribe if you find this video useful remember i'm coming out with the morphological features and clinical features of rheumatoid arthritis in next session do share if you find this video useful thank you